Hello everyone, let me just find the video real quick. Nope, it hasn't popped up yet. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. I uh, found my video, I'm just trying to get it on. Oh, look at that. We're live and we're back to standing, folks. Yay! Um, I create. I stand while I create, which is fun. Oh, hello. Sandy, how are you? Right, sorry, couldn't see who did it. Um, commented. Anyway, hope that everyone's video is okay because mine's a bit fuzz. I'm just trying to get But it looks all good on the screens behind me. Okay. Oh, hello, Jason. Hello, Tanya. Okay, so just showing you what we did last week because this week we're not creating in our journal. We're making uh, paint skins as collage layers for a few of our next layouts we're going to do in our classes because I mentioned something about skins uh, last week and um, you guys requested that we do that this week. I actually think it was Tanya, so woo! So that was the fan brush flowers. I am doing the paperwork for the classes that I haven't been doing the paperwork for tomorrow or tonight or they'll be done by Sunday. Um, guaranteed because I cannot keep it going. Um, well, hello, Tash. Hi, Debbie. Oh, yeah, we had a great day at the shop. Well, I did cutting like usual. So we're just going to take that and move it over to the side. Um, and let's get started, shall we? Okay. Here we go, folks. So to make our skins, we have some pieces of plastic. Most of them are just leftover bits of packaging. Good paper range. Jason, you need to stop putting ideas into my mother's head. And then, um... He's just got to come up with the other 19 designs for the paper collection. I probably have about 20, but you know. <laughs> we won't go there now. Hello, Sandra. Okay, and then, so, yeah, they're just leftover pieces of packaging. Like, this is an extra piece that you get with your stamps. And this is like a bag like this, this is our packaging here that i'm about to use um so yeah we're good oh hello honey robin hello beryl so basically we're going to start off with just making a simple skin first on our smallest piece and then i'll show you how we can incorporate some collage into it to make it a bit more detailed the great thing about skins is that once you peel them off they're super thin they're almost like um a thin as tissue paper which means that they um can go basically on anything with not that much gluing involved and the other great thing is is actually not as um if you do it correctly it's less fragile than tissue paper so you can do more techniques with it you can stretch it a bit more you can be a bit heavy-handed with the glue and not worry about it falling to pieces or over soaking because it's, it's dried paint um so i know of a lot of people that do this technique um, that are heavy handed because it's just, it's super easy to do. Um, and they have plenty of time on their hands. So they do take about a week fully to dry, depending on where you are at this time of year. Um, if we were in summer in Gladstone, we could do them basically in this hour class fully on a heat wave without the aircon on. Not gonna lie. Oh, hello, Dee. So let's get started. So we're just going to put down, so we'll do a simple one first, which is just the paint. And I'll show you all the different techniques we can do within skins because there are a few exceptions. Like you can, um, and like when you obviously peel it back, you want to make sure everything sticks together if you are putting collage in your skins. So um, there are a few bits and pieces that you've got to do a little bit correctly. So we just put a little bit of blob of paint on our thing and we're going to use all acrylics. I don't use oils, A and B. Acrylics are just easier. So uh, I this won't this technique won't actually work with watercolors. So you will need to do it with paint. So we're just gonna get our palette knife. There we go. And they want rather a smooth coverage. And so the thinner you get it. So that's how thin our skin's going to be. Because we are doing this on quite a thick piece of plastic though. I do want to get it a little bit bigger. I 
Oh, I'm so glad you passed the ride. That's okay that you didn't join in this morning's class. Remember, ladies, if you can't make it to a class, and oh, and gentlemen, sorry, Jason, um, if you can't make it to any of the classes, you can just watch them later because everything is um, like there forever, basically, or as long as Facebook exists. So. You can watch them there. And we also are recording to YouTube now as well. So um, if your Facebook is playing up tonight, because sometimes I know when our night classes, Facebook, um, because of Wi-Fi issues, it just plays up a little bit. So we can, um, you can jump over to face, uh, YouTube and go that way, because I can also see all the comments on YouTube. So it's all good. Okay, so this here is our just our normal skin. So as you can see, it's kind of like... Um, Tempering chocolate. Sorry, I'm thinking of Master Chef here. Oh, hello, Di Diane. So, um, basically, if you want to see what your skin's going to look like, this is what's going to look like. So that's the texture you're going to get in it once you peel it off on the other side. So, that's our plain simple skin. Once that dries, we can peel it off, which will be next week. Hello, Lorraine. Okay, so we're just going to put that to one side because we don't want to get that paint everywhere because it's wet. The other technique we can do is is we can do some work with our paints as well so some stencil work and all the rest of it so what i'm going to come and do is on uh this piece of plastic i know right i'm trying to use up all my little pieces that i kind of uh store up along the way oh to use for collage so for this piece i reckon we could use maybe this one here and what we're going to do is, is we're just going to grab our palette going to do some stenciling which means I don't particularly want um, my my paint already on my piece of plastic sorry I have to think then so we're just gonna stick I think I'm gonna do my little under the sea man so we go. We're just going to remember where our plastic is. We're going to get them fully on there. Okay, cool. It doesn't really matter. We've got our messy mat underneath, which means it's okay if we miss a few pieces. Well, we don't really have a messy mat. We just have my white paper book, which is my messy mat because my messy mat grew mold. It had come large stuff to it. Really? <sighs> if something of yours had art like stuff, would perish the thought. Yes, I know, right? Perish the thought. However, I did find a pair of jeans that had some tissue paper stuck to it today. That had been through the wash. Don't know who that was. No. I think someone just came along and purposely stuck some tissue paper on my pants after they'd been washed. Yep. Just to sabotage me. Test before I shove them in the washing machine. I stuffed the pockets full of tissue. Well, you know. It's up to you, Dad. What are you doing in your spare time? <laughs> right, and there we go. So, just remembering, because we are doing this on plastic, you would have seen it just then. Sorry, I didn't explain it. I was just trying to get it right, because it is a little bit more um, difficult, because I'm not that coordinated with a pelt knife, would you believe? Um... You want to go a little bit here and a little bit there. So you want to do it in all different directions when doing it on plastic because it's very easy to get underneath the stencil. So you, you might not get your clean, as clean as a stencil as you want. So you definitely want to go a little bit that way and a little bit this way and holding it fast down. So you definitely need to make sure the hand that's holding it down um is quite still at all times so even if you swap over your dominant with your non-dominant for that one um if you're a little bit less confident with that one so we're gonna stick that one off to one side because once that's touch dry we'll add another layer which means we had to peel it off all together and get like this really cool effect of that one and we'll be like a 3d piece of texture then in one of our art journal pages coming up so yeah, we will definitely use these in our art journal pages or I'll use them on like little piece of artwork and I'll post them because I'm really on top of my posting right now. Not 
not, 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 not. The other thing we can do is we can do our stamps like usual. Um, with penning, it's not as effective. Heads up, it's not as effective, but it does work. So we'll just come in and we'll put some of this down here. And I'll just show you what I basically mean. So with the skins, because we have to dry it in between each layer, we are going to do like a bit of a backwards thing where we are going to, I am trying to do the least complicated stuff first and then the most complicated stuff last, but we might have to jump in between the stuff that requires more layers and the ones that don't, just so then you can see all the different ranges we can do with these things. Because um, there is a lot of layers that need to dry in between, especially with the ones where we add collage to them. takes a little bit more effort so we've got our stencil and we're just rubbing some paint on it like usual um I choose my colors pretty basic I'm not gonna lie I just kind of whatever my hand touches first I do have a few favorites I don't tend to use red or oh, hello Cheryl um just because I do find it a little bit difficult to use red it's one of those colors and green but um if you guys do have a color suggestion just let me know normally it's whatever mood i'm feeling in or sometimes i like it to be adventurous i do try not to use too much pink in these classes because i know i love pink um a lot of my artworks before i was uh 18 always had the color pink in it i'm not kidding i think i only in about three artworks i painted uh between the ages of nine and ten that doesn't have the color pink in it so yeah, pink's definitely my favourite colour. Which, no surprise there. I'm a pink girl. Um, right, so we've just gone in and I've stamped that one there down. So I'll just lift up the pattern for you. So currently... At the moment, this is our pattern that we've stamped down. So it's quite clear what, what we've done. We will have to add an extra layer to this. And we're going to add another color to it. So then when we peel it, it'll all peel together. Because currently all these dots are going to peel separately. And I don't really want these size of dots going around my area without being stuck all together. Because I find it hard enough to keep all the embossing powder on place. I think these dots are small and embossing powder are quite similar in size. So I can imagine that that's just going to irritate. Um, well, it wouldn't really irritate me. It would more irritate my um, family that I'm now living with, <laughs> like my mom, because we our, her art area is just there. So no, long, so no doubt they'd end up in her area. So we will be putting another on that so that my will stick together as well. Um... Yes, sharing is caring, as we are told. Uh, so, in saying that, does anyone have some colour suggestions while we're at it? So we're just going to put that one off to one side as well. And the uh, the best stencils, stamps uh, for those ones, um, I find are either Darkroom Door or the Up by Marlene ones. Or anything from Studio Light, like, just because they're a little bit more high quality, and they've got that extra. I don't know if you can see that that extra depth to them. It's why they stamp so well with paint. I'm trying to see if I can show you the depth. Anyway, they're just a little bit more um, thicker where the where the stamp pattern is than some of the other brands, which means you're able to still get that detail really nice and clear, and they're easier to clean. Um, and keep clean as well. So there's that point, which is why I suggest them when you use paint as well. Uh, I, I, I didn't realize that until the weekend when I went and did a bit of an experiment between the Kater Craft and the Art by Marlene stencil, uh, stamps, and I realized that uh, they're better quality just because of the thickness that they give you. So now that I've done talking about that, we're going to do one of our collage ones, and this collage one is going to be a bit more different. It's going to involve some stenciling and some gesso, and then I figured that we could also try, I've got a few things that we can try. So I've got a white linen cut, obviously, my little octopus. 
I've had him for a while and I've wanted to use him. I also have a rice paper. I've got some vellum, some good old tranquility. That was another stamp that I got. I, I've been managed. I've just finished like kind of unpacking all my stuff so then I can get to my art stuff kind of easily or easier than what it was. So I did go for a bit of a rummage before class today. I've got my butterflies from the Lemon Craft Ladies and Gentlemen 6x12 uh, Fussy Cup book. And I've got my Art by Marlene black and white patterns. So I was thinking I'm going to use one of these, maybe tear it up. I don't know. I do like this text one, but that's because I'm a reader. I don't know. Uh, there are a few patterns in here, though. Maybe we could use that one. Have we already used that one? I don't know. I use a lot of these. This book's only about half full now, because... This greatest college papers. Could use that, but that's it's a bit dark actually. Hmm. Now, anyone got any suggestions? Because we are getting up to the collage ones now. We we're gonna do like a multi-layered type thing. Oh, so we are gonna be here forever. Literally. Hmm. We might do I guess that was me falling over very quickly in the video. Maybe we could do this one. I think this one here. What do we reckon? This one? Maybe. It's got flowers. My choice. That's my reasoning behind it. So. This one here. And then we got our butterflies and our vellum and where's our big piece of paper? Well, our big, not paper, plastic. Right, so we're going to use our A4 piece of plastic. We're going to skid those along because, you know, that's what we do. Now, with the collage, I'm just going to tear. Oh, hello, Diane Brown. Um, So we've got a few bits and pieces and it's okay that you're late we were running a bit late ourselves so I'm gonna just gonna tear these bits up and what we have to remember is they are well I'm not gonna make it in room so you can just go about this one here where you lay them down flat like because the um for you to see your card you do have to face it face down so then you see all the little bits and pieces like so but um and then put the paint over it however the likelihood is is that it's all going to bunch together at one end and then you'll have to try and work it all out on the rest of it or your other option is, and I do favour this option just a little bit more because it, would you, like, I know it's adding another medium to the layering, but it means it's a little bit more cleaner. Sometimes um, adding another medium means it's going to be a bit more clear. Oh, I went to all that trouble to move the power board and then I didn't turn my lights on. click them to the right setting. Is that not on white? No, I don't think that's on white. Oh, that's positive, isn't it? That's on white. Uh, the middle button. The middle one? Yeah. There we go. There you go. Hello. We have a light. This would be light. <laughs> I'm sure that's from a movie. Um, there it is. I love you. Oh, hello, Mark. My beautiful girl. Oh. I don't oh, think... I just about finished my video on how to get to... The Morayfield Craft Show. Because there's, there's a dodgy entrance. It's not dodgy, dodgy. just down the back. It's, it's a complicated. I, I cut out the five minutes sitting in the traffic light. Oh, but yes. Please. Okay. Um, did you did you cut out me swearing? Is it saying the H-E-L-L word? Yes, I did. Okay. Noah. Not Noah. Me and Noah. 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 Noah.
Glad to know that if I ever forget to turn on the lights, though, it's going to still have good quality resolution. Anyway, so we're going to add a layer of this clear texture gesso. We're adding a layer of this because it's basically glue. Oh, that's hi, Bronnie. It's excellent to hear you got your goodies. So, but the clear texture paste, it's basically glue. I don't know how else to explain it. It's glue, but it's got a paint consistency, which means it doesn't ruin your paintbrushes. It's quite nice. It's a good selling point. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here. And this does dry clear. Well, the few times I have used it, it does. Kind of clear. It's, it's a very much a translucent type of thing, so we don't want too much. I might have poured a little bit too much on there, so we're just going to come back and remove some of it because we want a very thin layer. It's just to glue our original layer of collage in place. Oh. So now that we've got that there, what we're going to come and do is, is we're going to come in and stick our... Um, so clear, uh, texture gesso, it's a little bit more translucent and it's a bit more easier to use in the fact that it doesn't stick like everything together and you won't have to quickly run and clean your palette knife afterwards. Whereas a gel medium is a hundred percent transparent, um, and it's a bit thicker, which means your skin will be um, a lot thicker to peel off. Um, it also means that you'll need a little bit more glue to stick it on to your next artwork. But uh, overall, it just depends. Sometimes clear gesso can be a little bit temperamental. It is worrying me how it came out white. It normally comes out more clearer, but I don't know. It's a learning curve. We might do the next one with gel medium just in case. So there we go. So now we've got that one there. And then I think we might add some rice paper. So just to show you the difference between what happened. So that paper come on got on really well. Um, with the gesso. Now with the rice paper, like I said, because it absorbs a lot, it most likely won't actually stay in place. Just because remember, uh, rice paper absorbs a lot more than our um, just normal paper or tissue paper. It's one of the things where if you're heavy handed, go your hardest. Go your absolute hardest because you'll still need more medium. Literally. So, just going to stick these in place because we will need to get this touch dry. And because we have to use plastic so then we can peel our skins off. Um, it means that we can't actually keep them to get it to the touch dry point. We have to wait until they are actually at that touch dry point. So that's why we're doing some of the complicated stuff at the beginning of class in the first half an hour. And then we're going to come in and just do some yellow dots, I reckon, with our Art by Marlene Cheesy paint. This is one of the new paints. Mum said I wasn't allowed to go shopping and then I managed to get some new some new of her, uh, new up by Marlene paints. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't able to get a full set, but I still got to go and do some shopping. Next round. Watch out stencils. Here I come. Right.
And then... What are we doing now? We're doing another skin. Oh, okay. We're making skins tonight, Dad, which is like a negative print. Wowzers. To make sense to your mechanic brain. My mechanic brain. I beg your pardon. Sorry, my father and I have had a, a bit of a banter today. Oh, really? At work. I think it might have been one-sided because I did most of it. Um, But, you know, he'll join in eventually. Yeah. When he wants to. Evening, Karen, by the way. Sorry, I missed your comment. <laughs> so that's what that one there looks like so far. How did I ever miss you? Okay. So as you can see, the clear gesso is just a little bit translucent. It should dry a bit clearer. But the next one we're going to do with gel meaning because I want to see those butterflies like 100%. I don't want any difference between those. And we will come and add a, like a paint backing layer just so that it all sticks together and it becomes like this one unified piece to peel off. That was a different thing, gel medium and clear gesso. Yes, and I hope I explained that in the best possible way. I think I did. I think I used English. But if I didn't, please let me know. Um, it does sometimes happen. Just sometimes. So let me just... To grab my gel medium, where did mom put hers? Well, for a small box. It's over yeah. the other side. Dad, just in front of her frame, has cling wrap on it. Ah, oh. I know where you left that the other day. Oh, really? Where? Oh, yeah, on the frame. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, D. So yeah, once these dry. It'll be really good. Uh, the other thing we need to make sure of is that we, um, you have you leave them on a flat surface to dry, just because if you do leave them on like a little bit of an unstable surface where some bits are lifted and some bits aren't, it will make it uh, creased. Um, and I thought I clean wrapped this for a reason. My clean wrap didn't work. No. My cling wrap did not work, people. Oh. I think mum's tub is just a hundred percent against me in every way. Ah, uh -huh. gotcha. Okay, where was it? There was one bit that was stuck. I'm going to have to come in and fix mom's gel medium later though, not in a video, because it's going to be messy. When I say messy, it's going to be like full on, hands are going to be flying. <laughs> right, so let's grab our piece of packaging. So now that we've done the difference between our rice paper and normal paper, which you'll get to see once we do a bit more work on that one, we're going to come in and do... I reckon some blue fly and oh, oh crap. Wipes! Come on. What happened? Unstable surface, wet paint equals war. Oh, wipes. I thought you said something else. Yeah. Uh, wipes, not. What did. Did you drop something on the floor? I did not mean to. There was an avalanche. An avalanche of calamities. Well, one could say that, yes. Really? How many skins did you lose? None, because I'm that good. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I've crossed over into an alternate reality. <laughs> what when I'm coordinated? I know. Welcome to Earth 2.0, if only. Right, sorry, let's just get going. So I'm just going to fussy cut out some of my butterflies. I do like these. These are from the new, well, not the new, but our restock of the Lemoncraft Ladies and Gentlemen range. 
I did try finding the piece of paper that had the, um, one of the sheets that's got like spanners and a whole bunch of tools, but I just could not find it in my area or in my crates. So I'll have to go for a bit more of a rummage next time, I reckon. Just a little bit more of a rummage. There we go. So we've got that one there, and then I think we need two others because, you know, we're going to work in threes. Odd numbers are always the way to go because it creates unity and it makes things look whole. It's a quick thing to make sure that you lay it. This looks that a little bit nicer. I'm finished. We do do some pages where we go against those rules of using odd numbers and having things uh, in similar compositions, but the we we do stick to the rules a bit in these classes just because it's easy. I'm a rule follower. And um it's good when you're and it's also good when you're experimenting with new uh, products or techniques that you haven't done before, you haven't done in a long time, that you do stick to like the ground, I guess, unspoken rules slash um, like just you ground basics of what you normally do and every day just so then not too much is changing and you kind of know what you're going about and doing just so then it's a bit easier on you. Because there's no point in going outside of your comfort zone and being too uncomfortable to even create. Like, you definitely want to, if you're experimenting, go outside your comfort zone. But just, I don't know, keep a hold of something familiar so then it's not too scary. Well, that's what I have to do anyway because I'm a chicken poo. I am still get scared of the dark and I'm 21. So we're just going to come in and after we cut out this butterfly, I reckon, because remember, we're going to do everything kind of backwards in these. It's like jelly printing. If you've ever done jelly printing before, you have to do your detailed things before at first and then go and do all your non-details, like, and then go and do all the widespread stuff uh, second. Whereas when you paint, you work on the background first and then you do the fine details. So it's very hard to tell what your painting is already going to look like. But you have to have that kind of in your mind already. So with this one here. Oh, I just put a coloured palette knife in there. It's a bit of a do not do moment. Where's my gesso? Time to remove the colour. So we're just removing the paint off that one. Because we've got paint in this gel medium tub. And we're going to come in. very hard to get colour out of a gel medium tub once you've got it in there. And you don't want to spread it around too much or else you could make the paint go off if you do leave it in there. So the point is, is you want to get it out. Okay, yeah, so that's all that colour gone. As you can see, I managed to get the colour out of Mum's gel medium. Thank goodness. Right, so there we go. So we're just going to shut the little mat. Pretend like we did not get paint uh, in my mum's gel medium mat. Because we would be in so much trouble. It would be unbelievable. Right, and then, well not trouble, just we would definitely have to explain ourselves. Well, I would. So we're just going to move this one over here and we'll put our extras. This one. Yeah, right, here we go. So we're just going to spread out 
our gel medium once again putting a nice thin coating on we're going to do two of these at once We can't put any of this gel medium back in because we did get paint through it. Go, okay, so we're going to stick that one there down. One butterfly, and then another butterfly, and another butterfly, and then what we might come and do. So we'll stick down our vellum over on this one here because we're going to make a bit more of a scene and we're just going to stick our, some of our collage pieces a little bit randomly and we're going to use this gauze that we came in and got rid of the colour on the palette knife with on our piece so we just want to come in and we'll cut it at this point so I did lay that down before cutting it just because I did want kind of a full coverage at the top here and I didn't know how much that was going to take it just depended on how much it clumped together so then we're going to come in and put a bit down here now that we've got the uh, gauze down because that is a quite a thick piece of collage we do have to come in and cover that with gel medium completely so we won't get the full texture when we peel but we have to make sure these bits and pieces stay together once we've got all the paint on them because when we peel we want it to be in one kind of like one piecing okay now that we got that one there I'm gonna come and do is on this one here I do want to add some sequins and some paint dots and then we can add some paint to the background of our other ones that we first did. So we're just going to come in and do some sequins. It might be a little bit more indiscriminate. Go. Um. And come in with our I think our sky will look quite actually yes I'm very uh, this, this technique can be very messy um, but it is a lot of fun so I'm just going to come in and do some dots around my butterflies I chose blue just because it's a very this uh, police blue is a little bit darker than the butterflies I stuck on, but it will have a nice contrast to it. They look quite nice. And then what I might come and do. Is some green on this one here because our vellum is actually see-through and our gauze is as well we can come in and do some background layers so we should be able to see him And I am doing this with the tip of the paint bowl just because thicker is better in this case with uh, these techniques. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip these bits over to show you. So, there's this one here, which remember that glossy, that stuff there will dry clear, the cloudy stuff, cloudy medium stick all that down and then we also have the doo -doo -doo -doo. butterfly 
butterfly one there which looks really nice so what we're going to do is we're just going to put that down and we're going to bring in our first few that we did that needed our second layer of paint and we're going to put on the second layers of paint just so then everything is stuck together quite nicely especially for the ones that we've put like the collage on we do have to wait though until it's touch dry remember if you don't wait until your things are touch dry it will mix a bit and i'll be kind of like trying to pull um a matted mess off when you go um, in next week to pull it off so that's why we dry it in between each leg is it time just to become its own compound and to well it's a lot of chemistry talk sorry I've been reading some of Noah's assignments on his English like I just read it to make sure it makes sense and he has a full stop where it needs to be and all the rest of it um but yeah so sorry about that the vocabulary is a bit off but yeah so just so then it's all like stuck together quite nicely so then when you peel it off you can do it in one take uh it took us a while to get there oh uh, thank you d so we're just going to put that off to one side and we'll grab our stenciled one and ow stamped one so the stamp one did fall on the ground face down so we have kind of got a little bit of smudging going on there now but meh. so we'll do the stencil one first because it's touch dry now and what we might come and do is we need we have our backing layers to make sure that our first layer really pops we want something that's a nice contrast oh, thank you yeah the butterflies should look really good once we get that background layer in there you could just put another we might for um the butterflies or the or this man here we might just put another layer of clear on it and that way then it just it's just that there so we'll come in though and put like some green behind this one some Aussie colors green and gold So doing bright contrasting, it's purely just for me, you could do it like in very similar colours. You just won't see your textures that much. And it is a lot of work in doing the skin, so you definitely want to see all your layers, I reckon. That's just me though. Like I, I'm that type of person where I'm like, no one can repeat the amount of layers that I put on a painting because you can see them all. I make sure people can see my collage because that takes effort right and then so we come in so now Yeah, so I am mixing products in my classes just so that you can see that you can do similar techniques with similar paint brands and all the rest of it. Just something you can get, like, you, you're not limited at all. So that's that one there. As you can see with our green background. So now when we peel that off, everything will be stuck together. And very nice. So we're going to put that one off to one side to dry officially now because he's finished and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our our main man oh he's not really touch dry yet or well, he's he's just touch dry like barely touch dry and we've just put green on that i'm just gonna grab a few baby wipes people Just a few. Oh, there we go. 
Right, so then what we're going to come and do is I think I might use the clear gesso just for this one here because I said we were going to do it just so that you can see kind of the textures it's given and we're going to do this very lightly because some of this man isn't dried fully so we're just going to come in and do it nice and light. Because we want to get it nice and thick. This is going to require a little effort on my part. If you're light handed, this should be very easy. The other option is, is that you can just leave it a couple of hours, go and do some baking or something, and then come back and do it on the weekends when I was living in Brisbane and didn't really have to work on the weekend. I just in between my layers of paint, I'd go and bake a cake or something. Right, and there we go. So we've got that one there now. So all his little bits and pieces are joined. And we didn't smudge too much of it. So woo, go us. So there's that one. And then we're just going to put him off to dry because he's also finished for our peeling next week. And now we've got the last few that we did. So we're just going to clean off this one here. And I don't really want to do full coverage, I think, but I definitely need to do some paint behind the collage layers that I've got here. So let's just put. We'll do one at a time actually. So we'll do this one here first. Thank you. So there we go. Just gonna do that one. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna do a few colours. What are we thinking? So this is what it looks like at the moment. We might do, hmm. what colour do we think we're going to do as the background? Because that is clear gesso, so it's going to dry pretty much translucent. If not transparent, that white there. So, maybe if we did, I don't know, we could do, do a lot of things. We could do a blue, oh, maybe not. We could do a neo pink. What are we feeling, people? We could do a lavender, a burgundy. We could do this nice brown. Um, oh, no, because I used the last of my skins up before I came back. Um, Unfortunately, you will have to be patient, maybe, depends, this one's dry, nope, you will have to be patient, because that one there is not dry, yay, we might try and fast, and no, we can't fasten the process up, um, yeah, you will have to be a little bit patient with that one, I'm sorry, Diane G, I sure have Oh, I should have done a skin during the week because I used all of them up before I came back. So sorry about that. So burgundy and purple and pink. Right. Well. We could do purple. That's magenta. Where's my burgundy gone? Oh, I've lost my burgundy. I think I might have actually used all Oh no, sorry. I do. I have the wine colour from that one. I am growing a bit of a collection of art by Marlene Paints. So, so what we're going to do is if my lavender can squirt out that if not, I have a few needles. Go. 
So we might, so we're just going to come in and squeeze some of these colors down. I don't think that helped at all. How is that even possible? What's that? I don't know. I haven't had a scribe for like 50% of this class. Well, if not 80%. Gee, well, it's hard to get good help. I know. Find out where on earth he is. He put up me because I complained about how he's not actually that reliable of a scribe just before we went live, by the way, people. Because apparently he's very reliable. <laughs> he ain't here. He ain't here. How's your skins going? Pretty good. I should have made one during the week because I don't have an example of what they look like afterwards. Do you have No, any it's pinned on the whiteboard at work. I know. I know. Oh, no, it's on the corkboard. It's on the corkboard in my office area. Uh, dear me. Well... Well, we're not doing anything on Monday night, are we? No. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a reveal when we get home, maybe, if we're not too tired. And then you do a class later in the week. Ah, okay. No I... email this week, maybe. Oh, there might be an email. See how I feel tomorrow. Yes. I'm packing the car um, is a priority. Yeah, so we are going to use a braille. Just a heads up. I've got to start applying to the Oh, thank you. So we are going to use the brayer for this one just because there is a little bit more to go. Um, and we don't really want to use our fingers because that's going to mix all the layers together. So by doing the brayer, it's only going to do the top bit that it can touch, which is quite nice. Um, heads up, if you don't use a um, clean brayer, you will get the texture of it. But that's okay. With your art brayers, you can actually peel back layers of your uh, brayer to make it clean. And we now have a new scribe. We, Sorry if he hasn't liked your comments. He's a bit lazy. He hasn't been here basically all class. Where is he, my ox? Oh, we don't want to know. Okay, we don't want to know. Okay, so. We're just coming in. I am being wary to stay away from my yellow dots because they are not dry dry yet. They are not ready to be touched in any way, shape, or form. What did you last read? Uh, the Diane G one with the using of the brayer. Yeah. All right, here we go. And then... There we are, folks. And we're just going to come in and clean our brayer up. Do a bit of a roll. Yes, this is how you clean your brayer. Yeah, it, this is the most effective way, though, rolling it on some clean paper. It just means that you get it all off. You can run it underneath water. Um, it works. It just it can be a little bit risky sometimes. Why not you get all the product off? Because there's always that one spot that you forget to do when you're washing. Trust me, I know. Um, and it's unintentional completely. And you're like, how on earth did I miss that? And yeah. So here we go. So this is that one there with our final layer of paint on the background. As you can see, it looks very nice. When we peel it off, this is the side we will be seeing. And that's the side we won't be. So there's that one there. I'm going to go and lay him nice and flat somewhere. Somewhere. I should have seen that song get pinged. Um, that would be bad. Sandy so lovely. Oh, thank you, people. Right, so now. Aren't you supposed to be scribing? I'm kind of busy. Yep, and he got up me for arguing. So I'm just kind of. You wait for it, people. Yeah, so when we peel them, we'll either peel them on Monday next week or when we come back to classes, which you guys get to decide whether or not we continue with nights because we can do Thursday nights now or we go back to Saturday mornings. It's up to you guys. I don't really um, have a preference. I like teaching at both times. It's up to you, honestly. 
hopefully Maddie or Missy doesn't um, knock it over. Um, I'm actually got a pretty good relationship with Maddie. She doesn't come near my stuff because she knows that I'm allergic to her. And I give her pats every day. So like I, I pay her with a with like ten pats a day for her not to annoy me. Well, it's Missy, I don't, Missy's just a nut job. She crackers. No, Missy's just got brain damage. No. No, Missy. Missy's Missy. Ah, oh, okay, so nights works better for you, D. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's just, it's whatever the majority wants, realistically. I'm not too fussed about when I teach. Um, Thursdays and Saturday nights are just logistically the best times for my family for me to teach. So, yeah, whatever suits you guys. I don't really want to do Tuesday nights again. I'm sorry if this suits anyone, but... Um, this is when Geisen's community band's on, and I like to play my clarinet, so, yeah. I don't really want to have to get um, playing. Did you tell Nana that you have her clarinet? Yes, I explained to the situation. She said I was allowed to keep it under one condition, that I kept it in good working order, which means I have to show it to her working every month. No, she's going to expect to see it every month until she drops. That's just a little bit dark, but okay. I'm trying to keep it's, this it's class. The truth. I'm trying to keep this class nice and light. It is. Right. Okay. So, with this one here, as we remember, I had the vellum uh, on this one as the main collage layer. So because the vellum is so big, we don't actually have to worry about covering the whole thing. We just have to cover the edges um, to kind of cement it together, if that makes sense. So if I just flip this over for so you guys can see. As you can see, you can kind of see where the green is behind the vellum, but it's also right there. Um, we are also doing that all over the gauze as well. So then the gauze has that extra layer of um, compoundness to it. So with all that together, I did try and avoid where my green patterns were just because they aren't dry yet. If your green, um, if your patterns are dry, like your paint patterns that you do with your paints or your stamping or the rest of it, just go straight over it for no problems. But um, in this case, they're not. So we're just going around them. And yeah, they'll still peel off perfectly fine all together because they've had, they've got that glue layer underneath. They just won't have that extra backing, so we'll have to be a bit careful when we go in and peel, but that's okay. Um, just makes me a little bit more wary, and I think Amelia got a hold of the FPOS machine. No, 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 it was just doing its do at the end of the day. Okay. Right, and let's get our final layer on the butterflies. Pretty good. Yeah. Done very well. Got a few. You learnt skins from... Nancy from Golden Artist Colors. Yes, I did. Way back in the day. When I was in grade six, just after my nose op. Yes, you're still recuperating from your nose operation, weren't you? Your back are still around. Yes. Gold. Golden. Yeah, it's one of the best art paints in the world. No, I thought she said something else. No, no, um, Nancy's retired now. Oh. Yes. Nancy is a retired artist, which means she just. She, she just paint, which just sounds beautiful. Yes, it would work on baking paper. I just choose clear packaging because um, I got a lot of packaging that I save. I save everything, um, so you can do that one there. But Maybe you can do it on Glad Bake or baking paper. It works completely fine. Reuse, recycle. Um, now it's reduce, reuse, recycle, isn't it? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah. Get the slogan correct, Noah, if you're going to quote a cartoon. No other nanny. Come on, Right, now what colour do we think? Oh, thank you guys. Um, what colour do you think we should probably put behind our butterflies? We've got blue as our dots. We could do a white, just a nice solid white. 
or maybe oh, I don't know we definitely need to put something on here just because the butterflies as you can see they're not fully in that gel medium layer that they're not completely in it so we definitely need to go around them with another layer and the and the sequins are also a little bit too um floaty off the a soft peach oh i like where this is going down i like where it's going a soft peach let me see if i've got a soft peach in my stash i've got that color there it's not really a peach it's more of a skin if someone was lightly burnt mm. salt water taffy salt water taffy oh like the um like the stress oxide yes that is what salt water taffy is it's a color in the distress oxide thank you for your tone yes i i just said that i'm getting tone from my scribe now i want him replaced well would you like to get the replacement no the replacement was the original one that ran off i don't know how i mistreated him that he ran off on me jeez honestly Anyone would think that I just don't have empathy. You don't. I know I don't, but there's no need on pointing it out so clearly. Right, sorry, I'm looking for colours. Um Jeez, I don't have any of the salt water taffy colour. Mm. I don't think that's remotely close. I don't think mum has it either. She's bad. Bad on our part. I do have glitter though. Right. Um I'm not adding the glitter paints to these because it does make the um what's it called the paint a little bit coarse which means when you go to peel it off it won't come off in one layer or become all cracked um which could look nice if you want tiny little bit of little bits of each one but I want it just to come off in one good old swing so the peachy soft water taffy color salt water taffy not soft water it's a com combination of these three. So we're just going to come over to our palette and do a bit of work. Just a tiny bit of work here. Just a tiny bit. I nearly have this pink and I don't know why because it's very much looks like a medicine pink. You don't like medicine pink, do you? Nope. I don't actually know what the real name of medicine pink is. I'm yet to find it. Have you got it yet? Right, I think we're just. It's just called medicine pink. Or just pink. Hmm. Um. Sorry, this needs a little bit more, a little bit of white now. I will tub this color though. I will get a jar after class and tub it. There's a little bit of medium on this palette. Or I'll freeze it. Mm. Okay, I think that's the best I'm going to get close to it. It's not as 
peachy as we probably want it but it does have like that nice tone to it it's a bit lighter okay I'm just going to come in now. D says noise. Noise. Thank you, D. Right, we're going to come in, and our dots are mostly touch dry, which means we can do a little bit over top of them, but not too much, just because they're only a little bit touch dry. And we definitely want to go over. Marie says it's a pretty colour. Our butterflies. So we're just especially where they join on, but I don't think we've made enough of this colour, so we might just add some of the orange in. Right, here we go. Oh, I think we spread those dots out a bit, but that's okay. We just need to get all these bits and pieces linked here. Or in the one layer at least. Right. So I'm just trying to use up all the colour I've got out right now. So that there's our butterflies now. So I just added a few more other colours just to get the, um, the thickness we needed across the layers. So you can see some of them are coming through, but that's okay. And we've managed to cover, if you can see, now that they are definitely part of the paint layers and they won't fall off because it's this it's as thick as it could be, so um Diane B says, Mary John, I never knew this was a thing creating these sheets to remove when they are all dry. Yeah, so it is a thing. A lot of um some people do it. Uh it's kind of like a good trick if you are practicing stenciling and all the rest of it and you don't want to throw away your practice stencils you can do it on some plastic and add it to like a thin collage layer like it's um it's also really handy um if you do have some spare time on your hands because you can go and do it and the skins come out as thin as tissue paper like I was saying but they're a little bit more durable which means that you don't have to worry about over absorbing them with glue when you stick them down and they're quite nice and easy to do you can you can see the results of what you're going to get before they're even dry because we do it on something clear that we can peel off of so you know it's all win-wins realistically so let me just grab Debbie says, oh, beautiful, I love the colour. Yeah, it does depend on how thick you put your stuff down. They can be thicker than tissue paper. I mainly, yeah, I mainly do it because um, I get a little bit pooey when I have to, when my tissue paper gets claggy. So, you know, uh, by doing these things, it means that I can have the same effects. With the collage without any of the struggles so i'm just gonna put that one there that one there and then i am just grabbing all my different pieces and the cats don't walk on them doing a bit of a clean up on camera clean up and i'll do clean up and i'll do don't say that dad make him out he's in the shower he doesn't have magical powers like mum Diane B says, I'm going to play with this over the weekend at a retreat. Ooh. I will tell everyone where I love this. Oh, thank you. They do take a while to dry. So um, when we're in the peak of winter, it will take up to a week to dry before you can peel them for safety Diane measures. Diane but... G said a circle or square stencil would make a good base. Yes, it definitely would, wouldn't it? We definitely... Um, we are looking into, as a business, we're looking into doing 
a range of stencils. So if you do have a few ideas of what you would like to see in stencils that you haven't got, just text message me. Um, geometric shapes like circles, squares, and triangles are currently on the list um, of things that we that we kind of want to do with stencils. Also, a scripty one we reckon would be really nice. And um, I reckon those fan brush flowers as well would look good. But if you've got any more um, type of patterns you want, we I'm also thinking of doing maybe a brick one as well. Uh, just let me know, just so then you know we can go on and do that. Um, the, I'll yes. Sure, they dry before removing the skins. Oh, excellent! Yeah, it get it does get a bit messy when you forget to check if they're dry before removing them because uh, yeah, it's fun. Not really. Oh, hi Pam. That's okay. We're just finishing up, so tonight we made uh six skins. We're gonna peel them off next week. Uh, it will either be on the Monday or when we do our uh mixed media class. So a script stencil does sound good. Yes, yeah. So we definitely want to do a script stencil. And by us doing it, it also means that we'll be able to keep it in stock always. So um, it won't be like one of those things where you have to, yeah, like a limited edition one. It'll be quite like a multi-place there forever one. So with that being said, thank you all for, oh, maybe raindrops. Yeah, I might add a few of these to the list after class just because, you know, that's how it works but thank you all for coming and i shall see you next week i don't know what day we're doing it on and i don't know what the technique is but if you've got any questions just text me during the week and i shall answer them have a great week bye